Here we have a vernier caliper, a device to measure items much more accurately than just your normal ruler or meter stick. A vernier caliper can even be read just like a normal ruler or meter stick, but with a little bit of skill and a little trick, you can get a little bit more accurate. Before we learn how to put items in the vernier caliper, let's first learn how to read it. If you notice, there is a zero on the vernier caliper, just like with any ruler. However, below it, there is a free set of ticks. Uh, right above the millimeter mark that seem kind of out of place. These are the ones that allow us to make the accurate measurements. The most important tick on the vernier caliper is the zero mark. This is the place you'll be making all of your measurements from. It is a point that points to the ruler portion of the vernier caliper and tells you how and where to make the measurement from. Let's load a pencil into our vernier caliper and make our first measurement. Simply open up the caliper large enough to get your object inside. Close the caliper, not so tightly as to crush the object, but also tight enough such that it won't fall off. You should be able to wiggle it around a little bit and have it held in place. Then loosely re remove the item, making sure not to change the uh, position of the caliper. And now you're ready to make your first measurement. The Werner caliper itself currently is hiding the zero mark. Fortunately, we don't need it. All we need to do is focus on the zero position at the bottom. To do this, we are first going to locate the object's measurement in as far as centimeters and millimeters. It's not quite the one centimeter mark, so it's going to be less than one centimeter. If we count up the tick marks, we'll see it somewhere between the sixth and seventh tick. This means it's at least six millimeters, but a little bit more. With the vernier caliper, we can find out one more digit of accuracy. To find the last digit, find the line on the bottom that lines up perfectly with the line on the top. If you do this, you'll find out that at the zero mark, it does not line up. As you go over to the fifth one, it's a little bit past it. Go out to the sixth and the seventh, they almost line up perfectly. The sixth one is a little bit closer. That is the one we need. The last step we took will help us find out how many tenths of a millimeter our measurement has. We had already found out from a previous step that it is past the 6 millimeter mark. We've also found out that the lines at the bottom measure up on the 6th one. The 6 millimeter that we measured adds to the 0.6 millimeter mark down here at the bottom. A crude drawing, but it'll help me get my point across. When I said you need to find up the ones at the bottom that line up with the ones at the top, you need to find which one of these tick marks follows a straight line I guess a little bit of color would help. Which one of these follows a straight line straight through? Notice how some of these are mismatched and they don't quite line up. Some have come really close, but there will always be one which lines up the best. This helps you find out how many tenths of a millimeter it will be. If instead of this one right here lining up, we had it lining up over here, say these two, there was a lineup right here, this would mean that there was a 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter mark. We first found out that there was a six cent uh, excuse me six millimeter measurement to be made. We had to add, add that to the 0 0.6 millimeter for a total of 6.6 .6 millimeters. This here is the width of a pencil.